I, I think it's one of those really exciting moments uh, where there's a, there is a groundswell going on, and it's, it's happening in Australia, it's happening in America, or it's happened in America, it's happened in Australia, and now it's beginning to happen here. I, I, I remember um, the no-till movement back in the 70s uh, when my, my father was farming with no-till, and now suddenly um, uh, this whole new move with the whole missing pieces, the puzzle, uh, is, is getting more complex and the, these missing pieces are then being put together and this is, this is where you're then hearing and learning about it. I'm wanting to um, give a picture of where we can put more uh, space for nature. I'm, I'm going to be talking about how that can work, how it can function, how extraordinary the results that we've seen um, at NEP could be used as a, a blueprint for other farmers and, and landowners. Um, so it's, it's really sort of making space for more, more nature in our landscapes and how we can do that using um, animals and animal drivers uh, uh, for, for a system. The actual food production I think is going to be crucially uh, grown on soil rather than dirt. So I think there's a huge move away from uh, synthetic pesticides. I think there's going to be a, a huge reduction in um, the amount of uh, energy needed from uh, fertilizer, from other things that are going to uh, power our, our, our soil to produce our food. Um, I think that the uh, space for nature arguments are, are winning. I think that yesterday I saw um, some work from Matt, uh, Professor Matt Hurd saying 35% increase in yields uh, with a four to three to four percent increase in space for nature on farms. So you've got all this move of, of thought, thinking of actually the space for nature can give us better yields, better crops, better, uh, better futures. So I think what I'm going to be talking about is, is, is exactly that. You know, how are we going to do that and how big does it need to be and, and how do we integrate that into, in, into this more complex uh, future um, that is going to be our world. I am a Remainer and, and um, I feel slightly horrified that we are leaving Europe. Um, but the agricultural bill and the environmental bill and the uh, polluter pays and, the, and the, this idea of uh, payments for services and this whole new world that we are uh, beginning to get glimpses of, I think is very exciting. I think it can be, uh, it can be something that if we can get it right, will be absolutely brilliant for um, UK ag. I, I, I guess, you know, we, we made it into the 25-year environmental plan as one of the exemplar sites. Um, so it was so it's in you know, page whatever it is, 72. Um, so it's there in terms of influencing policy. I'm not sure. You never quite know what policy uh, is being influenced by, uh, by your work. Um, we get a constant flow of uh, people from DEFRA, um, from the Treasury. Um, they've all been down, they continue to come down. Um, so I'm guessing there is some influence uh, on, you know, it's going it's to be a complex, um, so there's going to be complex solutions for working out how we're going to bring back life and nature to our landscape. And, and one of them is going to be rewilding and it's going to be what we're talking about. Um, and I'm guessing, you know, the enthusiasm you're seeing from um, people from DEFRA is going to show that within policy and, and future thinking. And, I, I, you know, we're looking at the size of Italy um, leaving agriculture in the next 20, 30 years in Europe. Um, so huge land abandonment from systems that aren't making enough money for farmers to stay on the land. Um, I'm guessing that, uh, that I'm, I'm certainly calling for a lot of money to be spent on rebalancing our balance sheet in terms of natural capital. So I, I think that uh, it's going to be a mixture of things, isn't it? It's going to be net gain money from, from developments, it's going to be um, carbon sequestration, mon money for carbon. And if we look at some of the figures that um, we brought out from Rewilding Britain in terms of uh, payments for, per hectare for carbon sequestration for change of land use, um, you can get quite hefty sums of money from that sort of idea. So I guess it's going to be a basket of uh, sources of money coming in. We've got a lot of companies approaching us uh, wanting to uh, put us on their balance sheet saying, can we put money into you? Uh, you're doing our carbon sequestration, you're doing our greening of our company, you're, you, are, you are doing our water purification. Let's have a look at how we can uh, support you uh, with actual money. So it might be there's money from companies that are wanting to green themselves and, and put money into green space in, in, in our landscapes. So I think it's going to be a huge basket of, of different funding mechanisms that are going to come into um, our future. But, uh, 
But it, this, is, this is the moment. This is the moment when, for the next five or six years, we will have uh, an ability to change and create a new future for us all. And I'm guessing, you know, if we get it right, it'll be fantastic. If we get it half right, it'll be still okay, but we can get it very wrong. And we know how difficult it is for, uh, for everyone in this, political, uh, in this political climate with huge changes happening the whole time.